Hey guys, Mike from Magnanimous here, and today we're talking about audio. Sometimes you have to do shoots where only a couple people can be on set. You may not be able to have an audio engineer or sound person there to operate and run all the mics that you need. So what do you do in those situations? Well, I'm here to show you a real simple setup with a boom pole using one of our 416 shotgun mics that you can use for interviews and basic audio when you don't have an operator to hold that boom pole. The reasons you'd want to use a shotgun mic are a few. I have a lavalier on right now, which is great for real basic audio. But unfortunately, wireless lavaliers are prone to interference. And if you're moving quickly or having multiple subjects coming in, trying to pass a mic in between people, it can get complicated quickly and you can start running into issues. Also, lavaliers clip onto clothing. So if I have loose fitting clothing and I'm moving around a lot, you're gonna start hearing rustling and popping and things as that mic starts rubbing on clothing. And lastly, a shotgun mic tends to just have kind of better natural tones than what a lav mic's gonna have. It's very directional, so I can point it at my subject and get a really nice pickup without having to have something visible on screen. All of those combined create a really awesome setup so you can use shotgun mics to get clean audio for just about anything. But we're gonna mount everything to this C stand here so that I can do it without having to hold anything and I can be over at camera operating while my audio is running instead. To do that, we're gonna use this little nifty bracket here. It's called a boom pole holder and it's gonna allow us to slot our boom pole in and it's what's gonna mount it to this C stand for us so I can position it properly and get clean audio. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and remove the C stand arm on our short C stand here and I'm gonna mount this in to this smaller hole right here. It'll just slot right in. Now the front is this little Y bracket, the part with the arch that goes over the top, that's our back. And I like to mount this perpendicular to my grip head. This way I maintain tilt control and can really set how I want that uh, boom pole to be. I do like to start with it mounted slightly backwards, and you will notice that I'm gonna run this along the tallest leg of my short C stand. This way, once I arm a full boom off of that, it pulls down onto the big leg rather than an empty space, and it'll be less prone to falling over. And then lastly, of course, I'm gonna use a sandbag. Anytime I'm arming or booming anything, I like to have the extra security of that to make sure nothing falls over and to keep everyone safe on set. So, Let's go ahead and assemble our mic. I've got a real basic boom pole here. And with our 416 kit, we just take our little shock mount. We're gonna thread this onto the end. Once that's threaded on, we'll take our mic here and I'm gonna feed it through the rubber bands on our shock mount. Once that's fully mounted, I'm gonna take the cable here and attach there. This cable runs the full length of the boom pole so that I can extend it as I need and I'll run my XLR out the bottom to my Zoom H6 here that I'll be recording audio to. Then of course I have a nice high-end headset here so I can listen to that audio, make sure it sounds nice and clean. Now the exact angle that this shotgun mic is gonna be is kinda dependent on how we end up landing for mounting it, but no matter what, we're gonna drop this into the cradle here and we're going to extend our boom pole out. I'm not gonna go too far because I don't think we'll need to go too crazy far on this, but you'll notice how this cradle here grabs the bottom and keeps it from falling. Since I'm running it over my big leg, we've got plenty of support and I'm able to run this pointed down. The idea behind this boom pole being we want this mic to be as close to our subject's mouth as we possibly can without it showing up in frame. And there's a few different methods you can go about that. Some people will come in from the bottom and they'll point the mic up and say we tilt this down like so. And if we have a really close bust shot of me, we could cut our camera angle right here 
and you wouldn't see the mic, but it's pointed directly at my mouth, so the directional pickup of the shotgun mic is gonna get clean audio. The same thing can be done from above or from the side, all kind of depends on your shot and where you have the, cl the clearest path. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and angle from above because I want to be able to walk freely below the mic. So I'll set that and I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up. And then we just wanna think about positioning. Say, I'm gonna be standing right here. We don't want our mic pointing off axis. We want it pointing directly at my mouth. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit so that it's pointed directly at me. And now it's gonna have a really clean pickup of my audio and say we have multiple people we're interviewing. I could step out, someone else could step in, take that mark in the same position and have just as clean of audio. That way, if you have five or six interviews, you have to do quickly back to back to back. You're not passing lav mics or anything through. Or if I'm sitting here and I'm moving around a little bit, talking with my hands, you're not gonna be getting any of that rustle that we were talking about. Now, we just need to finish hooking it up to our H6 over here. For that, our kit always includes 25 foot XLRs so that I can plug this in to the back of our mic like so, and I'm going to feed this down to our H6. I'm gonna go ahead and power this guy up. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and feed into channel three since we're on the, that side of the H6. And we just gotta get through some menus here. This is our main interface. Now, one thing we have to bear in mind, the 416, and this goes for most shotgun mics, requires phantom power, which is an actual bit of voltage that runs through the XLR up to the mic to provide it power to run. Let's go ahead and set that up on our H6. I'm just gonna pull open our menu, and I'm going to navigate down here to where it says phantom. We're then gonna go on off, and I'm gonna go down to track three, which is what we are using. I'm gonna make sure that's turned on. We can then exit our menu, and you'll see that track three has a little lightning bolt that's turned on there. That signifies that we have phantom power through there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button to turn on track three, and I can start turning up that audio level, and you'll see that we start getting meters down here. Then of course, I'd wanna plug in my headphones so I can listen, which plugs in just on the side of the H6 here, and just so that I can make sure my levels are good, I'm gonna go ahead and stand in. And now I'm getting really clean audio here. And you can see on the audio meters here that it's falling right in between that minus six, minus 12, which is a really healthy place for our levels to be falling. I could then hit record on this to let this start rolling. And I'll go set this on the table. And in the event of a production, I can then go move to my camera, man that to ensure that my focus is good and the recording there stays solid while this setup records all the audio for my interview subject. Obviously has a lot of different applications, not just an interview. It could be used on various other sets and things, but this C stand and boom pole holder very effectively replaces a stationary sound uh, engineer who would have to be adjusting this boom pole on the fly. Now, if you need more dynamic audio movement, it's obviously going to be better to have an operator there. But if you're in a pinch or you only have a couple people on set, nothing quite replaces the ease of use of this boom pole holder. If you guys are interested in renting any of this gear for your next production, give us a call or visit magrents.com.